Hello, hello, Facebook Live. Hello, hello. Hi, we have our brand new microphones, you guys. This is super exciting. And I keep talking like this, and Joe's like, babe, you don't <laughs> need to talk that close to the mic. Mr. Audio Engineering Man, let me share this video over in my free Facebook community. If you have not joined us yet over there, it is called Pleasure, Play, and Power. And we have so much fun over there talking about all the intimate things that we wish more people were talking about. So as you were hopping on, Becca, hello, Molly, hello, Anna, hello, hello, hi, hi, ah, oh, yay. <laughs> Becca, is Seth with you right now? Are your guys' hubbies and, and boyfriends, partners joining? Or um, is this just like a girl's thing? Does Joe have other men here? Would that be nice to have men here? I mean, sure, if they want to join. And real quick, this quick disclaimer, since people are jumping on. Uh, if you can't hear us or if we kind of sound funny, um, this is the first test with our new setup. So feel free to let us know. Yeah. We'll do our best to fix it on the fly. And uh, yeah, we'll make it happen. Yes, we have our new microphones. Um, hello, Angel. Hello, Kaylee, Sydney, Sarah, Abigail. Hi, 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 hi. Beautiful ladies. Let's see. Grab your wine and come join us. I'm posting this over in the Facebook group. How is everyone? What day is it? It's Thursday. How are you? How is everyone feeling? How was your day? Well, Seth is playing video games. Oh, Seth, come on. <laughs> Come on. Hi, Morgan. Hello, hello. So, hi, everyone. We're so happy that you're here joining us on a Facebook Live. You guys sound perfect. Perfect. Awesome. That's what we're going for, perfection. <laughs> we're so happy. <laughs> so, we wanted to come and talk to you guys tonight about this whole idea of navigating vulnerable, intimate conversations around sex with your partner. Because as I work in sex and sexuality, and I coach in that area, um, I am getting a lot of women who are saying, I'm nervous to talk to my partner, or it doesn't go well, and it leads to a fight every single time, or sometimes even the men are coming to me saying, I want to talk to my wife about this, but I'm feeling really uncomfortable. Things are not, you know, it's kind of, there's this weird, like, stigma, taboo, even in, like, a long-term relationship where we wanted to talk about how we, over the last 11 years of being together, seven years married, have navigated these really intimate, vulnerable, kind of like makes your stomach want to shit your pants a little bit conversations, and how we've actually been able to grow from it over time. So hello, Sky. Hi, Miranda. Yay, yay, yay. Love that you guys are doing these lives together. Okay, Abigail, we have an, a secret announcement for you. Secret announcement for you. Do you want to tell them? What our, about what a little project that we're finding yeah our on? project the reason we got these super fancy microphones you guys we have do you guys want to hear a secret don't say it yet do you guys want to hear a secret who wants to hear a secret hi Taylor hello hello hi Rachel hello Haley hi Krista um, okay so tell us in the comments or get start giving us a lot of hearts if you want to hear our secret of why and I know it's super obvious but please play along because it's more fun that way okay of why so maybe it's nice. I feel like I've said it before, so I feel like it's uh, kind of obvious. Am I allowed to turn my head people. like this? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Katie, hello, hello, hello. Adria, so good to see you. So good to see you. Okay, look yeah, at all a the hearts. Of people saying yes and a bunch of hearts. And a bunch of hearts. Okay. Do you, drum roll. Saying, drum roll, please. Am I saying it? Yeah. So we've decided the two of us are going to start podcasting together. I was going to say, we're so, not having a baby. Yeah, not, nope, not having a baby. Nope. We're, Psych. We're bur Funny, <laughs> thought that was going to have a baby. Not happening. We're birthing we're a, a podcast. podcast. <laughs> we're conceiving a podcast together. Woo. <laughs> so if you have specific topics you want to hear about from a man's point of view and my point of view and our conversations together, please let us know in the comments below or send us a message. We would love to hear from you. Because we have so much we want to talk about, so much we want to share, and I feel like it's super valuable. I mean, you guys tell me. Having his point of view here, right? It's it's fun. I enjoy this actually on my podcast uh, that I co-host with my best friend, Shannon. We talk a lot about, you know, all the things, sex, business, astrology, like anything, you name it. And we ha love having men on because it's so fun to get inside of a man's brain. Like, what do they so think about? So mysterious. <laughs> uh, oh, my God. Yay. That'll be gold. Do you guys have any ideas for names? We're stumped. Okay. We were going to call it Married AF, like married as fuck, but it's taken. Yeah. 
by some lame. You can't. Lame <laughs> I shouldn't say that. I'm sorry. We don't know you. We're not judging a book by its cover. We love you. We cheer you on. We celebrate you, but you stole our name, bitches. We really wanted it to be called Married AF, but someone took it. So if you guys have other ideas for names, we want it to be a little jarring. We want it to be like a little intense, like kind of stops you in your tracks because that's just how we are. We say the word fuck in our house a lot. It's one of our like favorite words. Um, it's going to be about sex. It's going to be about relationships. It's going to be about supporting each other, growing old together. Um, a big part of our mission um, is to lower the divorce rate. Um, it's why I do sex coaching and sexuality work because I feel like that's a huge part of it. Um, and it's why we talk about these things together. And Joe's passionate about coming on here with me. Um, Becca loves your honesty. <laughs> So we want to be able to lower the divorce rate, you know, um, of course we always respect, um, anyone's reasons if there's abuse or cheating or things that you just cannot work through. And, and I mean, everyone is entitled to their own opinions and thoughts and we support you doing what's best for sex with the Celines. That's amazing. <laughs> oh, Miranda, that's amazing. Um, but that being said, like we totally support you, but we just believe we see a lot of people giving up. Yeah. Too easily, too mm -hmm. soon. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there's more to being married than just throwing in the towel when it gets mm -hmm. a little rocky. Yeah. I mean, there's arguments, there's bickering, there's dry spells, there's, you know, life shit that happens. Things can be difficult. Relationships are not easy. Um, but we vowed, you know, and so that's kind of one of the things we're going to bring up when we talk about tonight's topic that we're going to get to. Um, so yeah, we're starting a podcast. Um, it's going to be something where Joe is able, I mean, if you guys know Joe, <laughs> Joe's in the military, so he's gone a lot. Um, typically more often than he's home. Yeah. I mean, just being laid out long hours, you know, early in the morning and sometimes come home late at night and mm -hmm. unpredictable hours and all that good stuff going out in the field and deployments and yeah. you name it. He's about to leave again in a couple of weeks. So kind of what our, th our thought process is, is we didn't want to not create this just because his, his schedule is stupid. Um, so it's going to be a podcast where it's mainly um, some of my Facebook lives about sex, like different things that I do. So maybe solo episodes, I'm going to bring on some people and interview them in the sex realm, sex and sexuality work from other points of view as well. Like my friend Bianca, my friend A uh, Alexa, you know, my people I look up to, but then, um, anytime Joe is home, we're going to batch create episodes and we'll do like, you know, him and her points of view and, um, different like conversations together. And we'll interview other couples together. Um, maybe have some like fun date night stuff and be able to have both sides yeah. of the whole equation. So yeah, so that's what we have coming. So yay! <laughs> sex with the Celines is catchy. Ha 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 ha. Oh my god, yes. Like sex, so love, sexy. and other mysteries. <laughs> oh, hello. Sexy time. Some good names coming through there. You guys are <laughs> genius. Nisha, yay! The mic sounds so Perfect. good. Okay, good. Thank you. That, that makes Joe really happy. <laughs> so Joe has an audio engineering background. He went to school for it for a hot minute yeah. before the military. A little bit. A little bit. And so um, he <laughs> was very particular if we were going to have a podcast together that he wanted it to be high quality. So we got this whole little setup back here. I wish you guys could see it. Um, and it makes him really happy. So keep, you know, telling him how good his mics sound. It fills me up. How, yeah, fills him <laughs> up. <laughs> okay. So as we get started here, please in the comments, let us know what questions specifically you have or situations that you have in regards to having intimate, vulnerable conversations with your partner, uh, because we definitely want to make sure that we address those as well specifically and share our points of view and, and just our encouragement on that. Um, and I want to just say too, when it comes to intimate, vulnerable conversations, um, Kayla, okay, Joe's going to read that while I keep talking for a second, um, and then I'll read it. But so we want to, first of all, say that intimate, vulnerable conversations are always going to happen, like for the rest of your relationship, you know, growth and evolution and, you know, hitting new levels and trying new things. There's going to be things that happen over the course of a long-term relationship that's going to require intimate, vulnerable conversations. So first of all, we want to just say, we see you, we feel you, we get it on a soul level. There have been things I have had to bring up. There have been things Joe has had to bring up that neither of the other one wants to hear or things that are difficult or things that make us want to cry or shit our pants or tough pills to swallow, but it's part of a relationship. So we feel you, we see you, we hear you, we support you. You are not alone in this. Um, and we really hope that this is able to speak to you guys and you're able to take something that you can utilize in your relationship. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Do you want to read that comment? 
Um, yeah, so Kayla talking about fiance got in an argument last night, um, kind of revolving around low testosterone in the guy. So this is kind of, you know, I don't think there's any guys on the, on the, the live right now, but that's okay. Uh, Kayla, so, you know, I can't, I can't speak for, you know, your fiance's specific situation, you know, his, his age, his activity level, you know, what he does on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and nor am I, you know, any sort of licensed professional person to speak on testosterone. Mm -hmm. Um, I do know a couple different things um, about it, however. Uh, I think it is very important, especially if, some, if, a, if a male is suffering from less, low testosterone, that can affect a lot of things. Mm -hmm. uh, it can affect a lot of his emotions, which in can turn affect your guys' relationship. Mm -hmm. um, that you, you mentioned the supplements on there. Um, if his supplements are making him jittery, um, I would suggest you know, there are some more natural ways in order to increase testosterone. Um, you know, intense exercise uh, or you know, red meat. Exactly. Something as simply as eating red meat mm -hmm. um, can be a way to naturally, you know, increase that um, testosterone. Now, if he, did, if he is, you know, if he was um, prescribed those supplements by a doctor, you know, definitely recommend going back um, to that doctor and being, hey, these supplements aren't working for me. They make me feel, you know, worse than they do, right. you know, make me feel better. Um, but those are just a couple of tips that I have. Again, I'm no, I'm no licensed professional on the subject, but. Um, you know, that's definitely, that can throw a lot of things out of whack, um, the low testosterone. So hopefully that helps. Absolutely. And, and Kayla, I hope we're saying your name right. First of all, hello, everyone joining. We're so happy that you're here. Um, you know, thanks for being so open and vulnerable and, and transparent sharing this with us. I know that every time you guys bring up these like intimate topics, um, I want to honor you and I want to celebrate you because it's not easy, but I guarantee, I guarantee fucking tea that someone else on this live or that will watch the replay has a similar situation and is going to be able to gain so much from it. And so when one of you goes forward and says, Hey, here's a really uncomfortable, vulnerable topic, but I'm going to speak out about it. It gives other people permission and it helps other women feel less alone and men feel less alone. And when we remove the stigma and the shame and the taboo around these topics, we're going to have a lot of healing, both men and women and we're gonna be able to raise the frequency of the planet so thank you I see you and, and we're holding so much space for you through this um, so Joe kind of covered like the man side as far as yeah definitely different things that can increase testosterone um, I guess I would ask Kayla is this something that he's open to talking about um, is he seeking support for it mm -hmm. I think one of the things that can be difficult in vulnerable conversations is when it feels like one side wants to change and the other side is like kind of at a standstill mm -hmm. right so I think something that has been big for both of us is that we've created a safe space for both of us to be able to go and have these intimate conversations and bring up these concerns with each other, knowing that we are met with love. And yes, he says some things sometimes that are hard to swallow. And I'm sure I'm yeah, the same. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's things that are talked about sometimes that are that are awkward that are hard that are difficult things I have to hear or or things that he has to bring to me concerns he has or certain things he wants or or whatever maybe he feels like he's not having enough attention or whatever it might be so it's it's creating that safety right with your partner so I would definitely say um have you guys had that conversation where it's like listen like creating this safe space where we're not distracted. We're not on our phones when it's coming up. It's not in the heat of the moment. Maybe, you know, one of you wants sex, the other one doesn't. And then it's like this whole fight and it turns like in the bedroom and in bed together. And it's like hormones are high, really, you know, it's really intense. Um, we have these conversations face to face, like we're on the couch together. Maybe the TV's off or it's like pause the TV for a second or put the phones away. Like I really need to talk to you. Um, and we've also kind of a big thing when we were preparing for this live and just like having banter conversation back and forth about what we wanted to talk about. Something that has been huge for Joe and I in, um, in regards to these conversations is we have made the agreement since day one, when we got married seven years ago, that divorce is not an option for us unless someone cheats or unless someone becomes abusive. Um, divorce is not an option. So when we bring up these vulnerable conversations or I feel hurt and I approach him or he wants something or needs something that I'm not giving him and he needs to approach me, we literally cannot throw the D word around. I see a lot of people be like, I'm going to divorce you if you do that or, you know, you bastard or whatever. And it's like super um, degrading versus like a safe container where we can both go knowing we're not going to be judged. We're going to be loved. And it might be difficult things to hear, but knowing that I can go to Joe and talk to him about stuff, knowing that divorce is not an option, knowing that worst case scenario, right? In our heads, we're like, oh my God, if I say this, he's going to leave me. 
right? Or, oh my gosh, if I say this, she's going to leave. When we both know that that option is not there, we're able to come to each other with things and share it knowing that the worst case scenario is that there might be some dissonance or there might be some resistance or it might be ha like someone might be angry or frustrated, but knowing that we're going to make it through it no matter what. Like it's just because leaving each other is not an option. We're only going to grow and get stronger on the other side. So I would definitely say like, have you created that safe space? The other thing is definitely... Um, sex is such a, is such a tricky thing, right? Because so many factors like circumstances and context and emotions and stress levels and hormones and chemical balances and, um, arousals and turn-ons and turn-offs and fantasies and, you know, whatever it might be. There's so many pieces that go into someone being turned on, right? I'm aroused or I'm like, eh, I'm shut down. I'm turned off. Do not touch me. Right. Both on the man side and on the woman side, there's two different operating systems trying to come together and, and make love. But for him, his hormones are fighting against him. So he's frustrated there, right? And then on your side, you're accelerated. You're like heightened and excited and eager and, and ready to go. And so we're like coming up and it's like, you guys are doing this, right? And you're not able to come together. So I would definitely say, have the conversation with him. Like, is he open to going and talking to a doctor, talking to a naturopath, whoever, um, and trying to figure out the testosterone things, right? And then are there times where he is turned on? Could we try new things? Or are, you know, stress levels, how's his stress? Um, you know, could you try different times of day? Could you try, you know, more um, foreplay and more like leading into it? Could you, you know, right, we have to have these conversations of even um, consent conversations. Yes, even in a long term relationship, there still needs to be consent on both sides, right? Marital rape is not okay. Um, consent needs to be on both sides. So sometimes we have to have conversations about, like, okay, Joe might want to try something new. And I might be like, okay, let's have a conversation about it. He's not just going to do something to me without my consent, just as I'm not going to to him. So we sit down and have these intimate conversations of, like, what are your hard limits? What are you not here for? You know, are you okay with this? Are you not okay with this. Like we have to have these conversations, you know, even in a long-term relationship and they're not always fun, but we have to make sure that if you're like, if you're turn on, like I was talking to a girl the other day, she's like, I want to have sex like three times a day. My man can't keep up. Okay. Self-pleasure, right? Self-pleasure could be a beautiful thing. Um, if something is off like his testosterone, that's where I'm definitely going to recommend a doctor who specializes in hormones to be able to help him with that. Um, and then the other side is like, can you supplement with self-pleasure? Um, are there other ways that you guys can be intimate that maybe isn't sex related, but could maybe even lead there eventually? It's like we have to take the sex expectations out, right? Because for even like a woman, right, if she knows that, okay, at the end of date night, there's going to be sex, okay? So I'm like going into it, I'm like, okay, there's going to be sex. And you almost work yourself up so much in your head that it's all you can think about. And then you almost like turn yourself off because you're so like, oh my God, I have to do this later. Like I love him, but like, oh, my body is just like shutting down on me. There's so many things I could say on this. This is a whole nother life. Do you have anything to say? I mean, you've, you've covered a lot. <laughs> but that's okay. Um, I want to take it away, Mr. Celine. <laughs> take it away. No, I just wanted to kind of go back to you know a couple things. You know, namely, I think the the big thing that should really kind of be focused on is that whole divorce is not an option. Um, right. I think that. I mean, you you said it pretty good, but that I think that opens up such a. <laughs> I said it pretty good. <laughs> yeah. I said it pretty good, guys. Well, that opens up such a gateway and such a, uh, you know, a, a safety net of sorts mm -hmm. for you guys to, you know, for you and your significant other to oh, dig did. into those conversations a little bit more without, you know, oh, you know, is he going to, you know, like you said, is he going to leave me or is, you know, what's going to happen if, you know, I bring up X, Y, and Z. Um, because it, it, it helps you not sweat the small stuff, really. Mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, a lot of times if that is kind of looming in the background, you know, even if you guys have never, you know, you know, significant other have never talked about it, um, whether that being an option or not, it could still be looming in, you know, the back of your head. Mm -hmm. And then those little arguments, you know, like, oh, man, we got another argument again. You know, it's just building up, you know, this and that. Like, the first thing we did when we got home is we got into a little argument today or when I got home. Mm -hmm. You know, I walked in the door and I was like, oh, boy. 
he, the tension is thick in the air. Oh, today. Something's going on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was very frustrated <laughs> yeah. today. Okay. Yeah. Yes, we still have a little yeah. bit of bickers. Okay. Fresh, fresh home from work. and I just sat in here, here on the go. chair like yeah. this. Legs crossed, not a word. It's like, yep, here it goes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, you know, the, we worked through it and it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't an issue in my mind. It wasn't like, oh my God, this is it. Like, mm -hmm. I screwed up again, you know, whatever, a consistent thing of, mm -hmm you know, communication, whatever it may be. And, but it wasn't, I wasn't like, Oh my God, is she going to divorce me? What's going to happen to this? You know, this and that, um, because we've made that pact. We made that pact where it's like, Hey, this is not an option, like thick mm -hmm. or thin, like ride or die. That's, mm -hmm. you know, that's the name of the game. Marriage mm -hmm. is you, no matter what you ride it out. And I think if you can start working on those, not worrying about those little mm -hmm situations those mm -hmm. little arguments you'll work up into being able to talk about those big mm -hmm. you know juicy topics like sex mm -hmm. and intimacy and mm -hmm. things like that um i think that'll come more easily absolutely beautifully said yeah mm -hmm. definitely i'm glad we're okay now love you <laughs> okay so um the other thing i would say kayla and then i'm gonna get to sky here for sure and i know hallie's typing too hi everyone joining this is so fun yay yay, yay. thank you um thanks for being here we're so happy if you guys have questions around intimate vulnerable conversations with your partner around sex please post them in the comments below tag your partner or tag your friends um we would love you know the more the merrier so the other thing kayla i would say is another thing i think we forget when we get frustrated speaking about myself here is that he has to be just as frustrated, right? And even more so, it's like, it's almost like um, his body is fighting against him. He wants it, right? He loves you. And if this is something men and women both, we enjoy sex. When we feel like our body is literally failing us, it's the most frustrating and irritating and sad thing because he's like, oh my God, like I'm not performing like she wants me to, I'm not able to keep up or I'm not able to give her what she wants. And again, that's why this whole divorce thing is so important because in our minds, it's like, oh my God, they're, if they can't get what they want from me, they're going to leave and go find it somewhere else. So make sure to reassure him, right? And to love him and to remind him that you guys are in this together. You're supporting him. Ask him what it is that he needs from you because sometimes we assume, um, but some, some men want to be like nurtured and, and held during that. Some men are going to be like, no, dude, I got this leave it be, but it, thank you. It's good to hear that you, that you're here and you're not going anywhere. So I think a big thing to remember too, is just reassure him, love him. He's just as frustrated as you. Anyone else who feels frustrated in a relationship where your partner, you're feeling like, okay, you know, I want sex more. Or he wants sex more, or, you know, X, Y, Z, or, you know, who's going to bring up the conversation. Guess what? Literally guess what? Nine times out of 10, I'd say 99.9% .9 of the time, your partner knows that something's up and they're just as frustrated. Someone has to bring it up. And I know this was true for us where, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but energy doesn't lie. Hmm. So when I felt off in sex, you could tell. Yeah. Or if I fake something, he can tell. Mm -hmm. Or if he's not feeling it in his head somewhere else, I can tell. Energy doesn't lie. So faking it and pretending and like ignoring it and avoiding it is not helping anybody. Call it out. Call it out in the moment, right? And and Kayla, for you, I would just reassure him and love him, you know, through this for sure. Sky says, you are not the only one girl. Oh, Becca said, the physical problem becomes a mental problem. I feel this so much. Absolutely, right? It starts physical and it becomes, it leaks into everything, you guys. Sex is like a foundation and sex is an important part of a relationship. So it's important to get to the bottom of it. That's literally why I do the work that I do because I see so many people buzzing right past it. Like, Oh, well, I just, I just want the money. I just want the business. I just want the kids. I just want this. I just want to be a mom. I just wanted this. I just wanted this sex and your relationship with your partner has to be the foundation of which you build your family of which your kids grow and learn from, from which your business grows, from which your wealth grows. Like if you and your husband or your partner or whoever is falling, apart your kids feel it your business feels it your clients feel it it literally ripple effects into everything you have to commit to making sex a priority having these difficult conversations and choosing to work through it and support each other and be there for each other no matter what yeah. all right babe Sky says, Olivia, and Joe too. Sorry, LOL, just so used to Olivia. <laughs> I know during one of the lives or maybe podcast, you brought up the fact that sex doesn't necessarily need to have the goal to have an orgasm. How can I have my significant other understand this? Most men and people will probably be like, what? That's the main goal, LOL. 
Great question. Um, so I'm going to have you speak on this first, but basically what I talked about on that live was like, take the expectation out of sex yeah. and just go into it for like, you know, an intimate connection or love or whatever, like mm -hmm. coming is not always like the main point or having an orgasm is not always the main, like that has to be the end goal. Yeah. And I think it's more, I think that's, you know, in itself, I think it's more prevalent to guys mm -hmm. rather than girls. Mm -hmm. Um, because it's it's easy for guys to finish. It's, most most guys. Not I all mean, guys. I shouldn't. Yeah, but it's it's easier. It, I feel like it's it's a it's a simpler process than for a woman. Well, and you're it's it's like a it's like an obvious when a man comes, it's obvious. Yeah. When a woman, sometimes there is nothing. Yeah, it can just be an orgasm. Um, but I I, I yeah. Um, okay, sorry. But I I think off. that when the guy can put that out of his mind like hey I'd, i'm not worried about that um, i'm not worried about finishing um i'm my focus is giving my woman significant other whatever the most pleasurable experience possible because then i promise you you're gonna he will have an orgasm he will finish if he focuses on that it's going to amplify everything by tenfold um yeah. Just trust in that, I guess. I don't know what else to yeah, say. Yeah, I think having the conversation around it, though, is simply this. Like, you guys are together face-to-face, -to -face, not distracted by phones or TVs. But it's like, hey, I heard this live video, and I have something I want to play with. Like, I want to just go into sex without any expectation. I want to feel closer to you. I want to be intimate. I want to have this, you know, experience with you. I want to love you. I want to pleasure you. I want to feel pleasure. But – what if we just take the goal out of it, you know, and be vocal during sex? I think that that's another thing, which is something we're going to talk a lot about in Embody. You guys, my six-week program starts on Monday. We've got four days left to join us. In Embody, we're going to talk a lot about being vocal. So <clears throat> a lot of times I hear women, myself included, we stifle ourselves during sex because like, oh, we have neighbors or, oh, X, Y, Z, or, you know, um, we're like, okay, I, well, I don't, it's embarrassing to like moan and to scream and like to whatever, but men are going to feed off of what's happening in your body and they're going to feed off of what you're saying and how you sound, right? If, if you don't come, right. And a lot of women don't, and especially like, um, vaginal orgasms, like penetration doesn't always lead to an orgasm for women like 80% of us, it's clitoral and you can work up to the, to the vaginal ones, but it's not usually as quick or as easy or as straightforward as just like the clitoris can nine times out of 10 bring you to orgasm. So when we take the expectation out and you have this conversation with him, like, listen, I love it when you do this. Like I love being intimate with you. Like I, and you know, X, Y, Z, like having that conversation and taking, <laughs> they keep saying expectation a lot, taking the expectation and the goal out of it. And you just have to be open with him because he's not going to fully understand yet, but just say, trust me, like, let's just go have fun. Let's just go play. Let's just go explore. Let's be curious. Let's love each other. And it doesn't always have to end in something. Now, that being said, women can actually have multiple orgasms without coming. Not every single woman comes or squirts or anything, right? You can have this like blissful ecstasy, um, you know, next level transcendence out of your body like you can have this beautiful orgasmic pleasurable experience but sometimes like you just need to be vocal about it let your body shake let your body move let your body speak you know use your voice um you know whatever it's got to be for you it's like you need to sometimes tell him or show him or you know so that would be something i would say too is have the conversation and listen when i have awkward conversations i go into it like this Hey, this is awkward. I kind of want to poop my pants. I'm like a little sweaty. And um, I don't really know how to say this, but I was watching this girl on Facebook Live and she said this. And I want to just play around with it and try it. Are you cool with that? And he's nine times out of 10, I'd say every time. You're like, all right. Yeah. Yeah. And like Joe said, when Joe started focusing on my pleasure before we stopped focusing so much on him, because when you are turned on, your man is turned on. When we started focusing on me, I was able to orgasm a hell of a lot more than when we went into it because he was um, 
men can be a lot quicker and it's very obvious then and they get they need time to recover and recoup right so when we would go into it and it was just focused on him like all of a sudden he's was done right and then i was like okay yeah that's what sex is but sex can actually be a pleasurable orgasmic experience for both parties take the expectation out while you play around and figure out what your body even likes and and you explore together and then going into it knowing if you're focused on first I can almost promise you it'll happen. Deal? And there's also a lot of like shame work and past work and things. It's not just like, okay, this move and then she squirts or this move and then she orgasms. Like there's a lot of mental game in it, especially for women. So commit to the work for sure. Okay, let's see. Does that help, Sky? What did she say? Yes, like the whole experience can feel good and be enjoyable doesn't mean I'm not satisfied. Totally. Because here's the thing too, when we have sex and when we feel pleasure as women, we're creating, and men too, creating sexual, and I don't know why I grabbed my boobs. That was interesting. I didn't mean to do that. We are creating sexual energy in our bodies that can fuel and we can harness it. It can fuel the rest of our lives. I actually know one man that I listened to on a podcast once. He never finishes, ever. He just doesn't. And he's like, I consciously got myself there because I actually take that energy that it's creating in my body and I use it in other areas of my life and it fuels me. And he's like, I just go in it to make love, to experience pleasure and bliss and intimacy and connection. But it's not just like, oh, how fast can I come? Because it takes like the magic out of it, right? Shannon says, why? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's interesting, right? And everyone's different. You don't have to do that. Joe finishes. Was that too much? No. Okay. I mean, most of the time. I mean, there been a handful of times that I haven't. But. Yeah. And here's the thing. I used to think I was failing when that happened, when he still experienced joy and pleasure from it. So it's, again, you have to be able to have these conversations because here's what happens when you don't have these vulnerable conversations. In our heads, we make up a fuck ton of stories about all the things. I'm like, oh my God, he's going to leave me. He's cheating on me. He must have masturbated too much a day. He doesn't need me. But and oh my God. That's not an option, right? Well, we've already established See? that's not an option. Yeah. No D word. No D word. Yeah. So that's Dick is saying. okay. Divorce is not. <laughs> <laughs> so, but that's the thing. Like, we, I make up stories and he too also will. That's why it's important to communicate it, right? I always make it a priority to RSVP to the party. <laughs> Shannon, I fucking love you more than life. I just love you. <laughs> so anyway, um, when we talk about it, there's less room for someone to make up stories, okay? That's basically what I'm saying. Okay. Yay. We'll probably hang out here for, I don't know, maybe another half hour or so, depending. So let us know if you guys have more questions. Hallie says, I have a 14-week-old. Yes, you do. Congratulations. Pregnancy, intimacy was not fun for me, so we just put it on the back burner. And now I'm at the standstill of dealing with body image. Mm. Hallie, I'm not just saying this because it's a plug. I'm literally saying this because you need to join us inside of Embody. We start on Monday, and we're literally going to tackle this together. Like, there's already 15 of us in there. We're going to have so much fun. We're going to dive right into this deep, intimate topic. But, okay, ugh, I'm literally so, so unhappy with my postpartum body, and I want him nowhere near me because I'm uncomfortable. Exactly why I'm running this program, yes, which he respects. I love that, 100%. I'm working on me, but it's slow. We openly talk about how we want to work on our intimacy, but then I'm like, eh, I'd rather just keep my clothes on. Yep, I've been there, and I haven't even had children. Um, I guess in this rambling is why... While our friendship is so strong, I love that, and we parent so well together, amazing, we need to get back to us. Can we take a moment of silence to have a hell yes in our souls? Hell fucking yes. Can I comment on one thing on that real quick? Yes, you can. Okay. Yes. So, yeah. <clears throat> you said that you know, I am working on me, but it's slow. I think this is something that everybody, including myself, forgets consistently, mm -hmm. constantly. Um, whether it's, you know, you're working on your inner self, your physical self, whatever it takes time. Mm -hmm. It takes time. It's a grind. It's nothing's going to happen overnight. You're not going to get your dream body overnight. You're not going to, you know, get in the perfect mindset overnight. Mm -hmm. It takes time. There's going to be ups and downs. You're going to rise and you're going to fall. And that's going to happen about a million times. And you're still not going to be exactly where you mm -hmm. want to be, but you're going to be a little bit further than you were yesterday. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think that is for me, that's what I try to keep in mind. Like every day is I'm better than I was yesterday, mm -hmm. um, regardless of what happened. Cause I did something. 
Mm -hmm. Um, but I feel like that's a, that's a huge block for a lot of people Mm -hmm. is that, well, it's taking long. I've been working on myself for Mm -hmm. a year, but I'm still not where I want to be. A year is not long enough. I'm sorry. It's not, it's, it's a continuous Mm -hmm. effort. So Mm -hmm. don't lose sight of that. Um, I think that's a huge thing. The dog wants to come up here and say a few words. Shannon says it is a grind. Jocelyn with the prophetics. Fuck yes. <laughs> I mean, it is. I don't know what else more to say about that. I think that yeah. I think that defeats a lot of people. If it's defeated me in the past, um, you know, and again, physically, mentally, whatever you're working on, um, you know, even in your job, your job, you know, you don't get promoted after mm-hmm. a couple good weeks of hard work. You know, it takes time to, mm-hmm. to climb in whatever ladder you're trying to climb. She says, can you write that down? I need to hang it on my mirror. <laughs> Just call Joe. Uh, I was about to give your phone number. I won't actually do that. Um, but here's the thing too, Hallie. It's so interesting because I just had a conversation with one of my girlfriends who just had her third baby um, very recently. And we were actually talking about this and I'm going to have her on the podcast to talk about postpartum because I, I can't even imagine postpartum like your your body is different, your vagina is different, your hormones are different, your desire is different, your priorities are different, your relationship is different, right? In every single way something is different and it feels overwhelming. And I know this is your second baby, so I'm not sure how your first compares to your second. I know every pregnancy is different, but there's almost this. And I was even talking to someone recently who just had her second baby. And she's like, I'm just trying to navigate how to feel comfortable in my body after two babies. And I, I, it's weird and it's, and it's different. And people aren't, don't talk about that, right? We don't validate the feeling that it's okay to feel fucking weird in your own body, especially after having a baby. Like you just grew a motherfucking human in your body and now, kind of a big deal and now your body has to like figure out like okay now what and what does this look like and so you're navigating this whole different realm than you know joe might or that i might because i haven't had children it's a it's a totally different bear right so like joe said i love that like give time and trust the process and and let the journey be the journey but that's why i created embody because i don't want to just teach you a diet or a workout like i i don't i believe in being healthy but it has to come from a place of self-love because I love this body, even though she might have an extra, you know, however many pounds or because she might have my rolls when I bend over and sit down or because I've got so much cellulite on my ass. Guess what? I still love my body and I'm still going to treat her well. I'm going to nourish her. I'm going to move her. I'm going to be grateful for her. She gets me from point A to point B, right? And there was so much in, I don't know, Hallie, if you watched the live that Joe and I did about what the man is thinking about our bodies when we're having sex. I can almost guarantee, almost guarantee from what you've said about your husband, he loves the hell out of you. And he thinks you're even post ba- post baby body is sexy because you birthed two humans for him. You gave him two incredible children with that body. And so it's this idea that we think, right? Because we make stories up in our head that I think, oh, if I try this position, Joe's going to be looking at my stomach and it's weird. Or like even, I don't know if that's TMI. I was going to say, even the other night, like, <laughs> I'm just going to say, it, okay, you cool? <laughs> Whatever. The other night we were having sex, okay? And I'm laying down. Yeah, we and, have sex. Woo, we have sex. Oh, my God, right? And and he put lube on his hands, and he, like, massaged my breasts all down, like, my stomach. My stomach is, like, my least favorite part of me in the entire world, okay? I have so many insecurities about it. And he rubbed my stomach and, like, up my legs and everything. He was, like, massaging the front of my body, which I hate, okay? Like, I'm working on it every day. That's why I created Embody is to talk about this. Um, but he massaged my whole body and like gave me a this orgasm that had nothing to even really do with my genitals. Like it had nothing to do with my with my pussy. It was the craziest thing of like pleasure on a different level, but I had to get out of my head about it. And he was like eating it up. He was dying. He was like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Like, hold on, hold on. I, I don't want to finish yet. And we kept having this, right? And we kept having this like exchange. We had to breathe together and do a lot of deep belly breathing to like basically keep ourselves in that moment. Like we edged and then we bring ourselves back down. And it was this beautiful experience. And my stomach, the thing I'm most self-conscious about, he was like giving it attention. It was the craziest experience for me. We never even like talked about it after. But for you, your hubby loves you. 
He wants to pleasure you. He wants you to be able to release and, and relax and fall into being nurtured and being taken care of, right? Being a mom, um, you're the one that's the caregiver, especially as women. We're people pleasers. We want to give, 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 but you have to learn how to lean back and receive. And yes, your body feels foreign right now. Um, I can't even imagine, but I have friends that have told me. So like I've, I've heard all the stories of it. And allow your process to be your process. The, the sooner we can start loving our bodies, the sooner we can start letting our man worship our body, even when we still have weight to lose or even when we're still waiting for that six pack to show through or even when we're still waiting for that boob job or whatever it might be. You know, when you can let him worship you and you start to worship yourself, you unlock, you unlock like this next level of intimacy together. And I can almost, I can't promise because you know, everyone is different and I'm not a doctor, but I can almost promise you that you'll actually shed weight that way because a lot of times weight um, that we're holding on to, especially stubborn weight is emotions and it's stagnant energy and it's judgment of ourselves and it's shame and it's hatred towards ourselves. And when we can work through that and release it and begin to love ourselves, you actually will lose weight and you can actually maintain a weight. I mean, coupled with like still nourishing yourself and moving your body, but do you know what I'm saying? He wants to be the source of your pleasure. Hell yeah, Becca. Damn exactly. Right. <laughs> a little competitive? You're, you're not finding that anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> Divorce is not an option. <laughs> well, even like I'll sometimes go to grab my vibrator and Joe's like, we don't mm -mm. literally the other day. I was like, you can use my vibrator if you want. And he goes, Get that shit out of here. <laughs> <laughs> he says, we don't, we don't need that. No. We don't need that. He's like challenged like by competition. it. Competition. No, <laughs> I don't need that. No. <laughs> Shannon loves Joe's t-shirt. I love it. Gun buddy. So that is what I would say, Hallie. Anyone that is feeling this way, I'm not even just saying this because it's a plug. I'm going to say it because I believe in it. Please join us inside of Embody. We start on Monday. There's four days left to join us. I can't even tell you like this is the exact work that we're going to be doing. Like it's a transformative process. It's a six-week program. There is no diet. There is no regimen. There is no you know, here's how to move, like move however the fuck you want to move. Just move your body. I don't care. I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about the inner work, the energy, the stagnant energy that has to move through the bullshit thoughts that are going on in our head every day that are holding us back. We're going to dive into this work together. Okay. Self-love, self-pleasure, self-care, goddess energy, sexual energy, showing up for intimacy, right? Being able to fully be seen, like all of these things that are holding us back in our lives. Like, damn, there's so much work, womb healing, throat chakra clearing. Like you guys, there's so much we're going to be doing in this program. I can't even tell you. We start on Monday, $333, um, six weeks, three payments of 111 or a personalized payment plan. Let me know. Does anyone else have questions? Oh yeah. Stacy had a question too. Scott, you say nothing that's too TMI. <laughs> I love you. Thanks guys for loving me. I love this girl. Never even thought of the weight being the weight. A hundred percent. Yes. Naked dance parties. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we haven't gotten quite that far yet. Maybe one day. I keep getting like stuck here. Shoot. Stacy said um, something about, it won't let me scroll all the way up, Stacy. so I apologize. But she said um, about breastfeeding. So I've been breastfeeding for two and a half years. And um, I believe you said, please, if you're still on, Stacy, tell me. But you said, uh, I don't even have my laptop to look it up. You said, I've been breastfeeding for two and a half years. Um, that you, oh, your sex drive is low. If you pull it up, it's going to like turn on the sound though. Um, your sex drive is low and you're not sure how to change it. Um, for anything like that with hormones, Stacy, I would highly recommend you talk to a naturopath or your doctor, have them test for different hormones um, and hormone levels because a, a lot of the time, especially with breastfeeding, your hormones are all over the place that you've got to kind of come up with a plan with someone who's certified in this. Like I couldn't do this for you. I wish I could, but I don't know anything about hormones really. So the thing that can happen is um, you need to kind of level things out hormonally and they're going to be able to provide specific supplements. The reason I say a naturopath um, is not because I don't believe in Western medicine because I think they both have a place. However, I think a lot of times with um, hormones, especially a naturopath is going to be able to give you like more natural supplements that you can take that will still be healthy for breastfeeding, but you'll be able to kind of um, normalize your levels and you'll be able to, to increase your sex drive from there. 
other things you can start to do a lot of times um, with my clients who will breastfeed, it's like almost like the breasts become a function to feed and to nourish someone else. So they don't feel like yours. They're someone else's. Right. So it's almost this idea of starting to shift your awareness into, OK, right now they are for the children to nourish them. And now they are for pleasure. Right. And now they are here for my husband or it's like, OK, my kids will only be breastfeeding for however many years you're going to breastfeed. And then you've got the rest of your life to have them for pleasure. So sometimes I have clients who like don't touch my boobs for the entire time I'm breastfeeding, like they're sensitive, they feel off, they feel weird, whatever. And you're able to find pleasure in other ways. Um, but other times it's just being consciously aware of like, OK, right now they're for nourishment, but later it's going to be sexy time and I'm going to be able to receive pleasure from them three and a half years. I basically just don't want to be touched after a long day of having kids on me all day. Totally. I don't blame you. Yeah. Um, kids are kind of gross. <laughs> um, we obviously don't have children. Like, I mean, I'm sure like, your children are lovely. <laughs> I mean, but I mean, just I'm, kids are great, but they get into things. They're, you know, they're, they're little tiny humans that haven't figured out life yet. So Sticky fingers a yeah. lot, and, uh, dirty band-aids. And I know that I'm not trying to directly compare, you know, having kids to anything else because we don't have kids. But even like coming home from a long day of work where, you know, you're sweaty, you're kind of gross. Maybe you had to deal with some dirty crap and mm -hmm. you, you just feel nasty. Mm -hmm. You know, the last thing I want to do when I walk in the door is like, you know, rip up my, off all my clothes and, you know, get in the sheets Maybe sometimes, Ooh. but like if you, right. you just sometimes you just feel gross and you're like, I need to take a shower and yeah. get this filth off of me and then we can go from there. Um, so I think that might be, you know, maybe with that, maybe that's a, a great first step mm -hmm. is like take a shower and with that, the intent of that shower is like getting rid of that, you know, you know, whatever is, you know, the, the kid, the kid filth, I guess you could <laughs> say. Um, that's what you're taking the shower for. You're getting rid of it. You're wiping clean and you're getting ready to you know be intimate uh, totally because I think you can translate that even to when you don't have kids like you have to have something sometimes for our mental brain especially if we're going from like a dry spell into oh I want to have all the sex it's like something in your brain needs to click for you to be like okay now I'm in this mode right to begin to turn yourself on so um, like I tell my clients this who are like type a hustler masculine driven and you're working all day and then your husband comes in and he like tests touches you and he's all like oh hey and you're like get your get your hands off of me like I'm in work mode it's like you've got to have something to consciously switch that masculine off switch the mom off and turn into Stacy the sexy you know desirable um, erotic sexual sensual woman goddess warrior queen that you are and like turn into that mode okay so having something that can like click in your brain it's like go take a bath like Joe said, wash the kid grime off of you, right? Or go like change out of maybe a sweaty sports bra, take a hot shower, rub some oils down on your body, put on some sexy lingerie, um, or even just like a night shirt or something that just like allows you to feel like sexy and, and breathable and movable, whatever is your jam. I'm, I mean, you do you. Um, you know, for me, sometimes it's like a spritz of perfume, like a certain scent might kind of spike, uh, spark me a little bit. Uh, maybe some sexting throughout the day, right? Where it's like, okay, I know later it's going to be like, turn this off and go into this. Like something for your brain to go, okay, boom. Like, you know, it's, it's whatever you've got to do to like get yourself in the mood and get yourself there and get yourself out of mom mode or businesswoman mode into I'm a wife, I'm a woman. I am a pleasure forward being. I have to have a transition period between work Absolutely. and home for sure. Yeah. That's something like, and you know, it, it, I feel like it seems that, you know, simply taking a shower mm -hmm. seems such like a simple and menial task. They're like, oh, well, it's just taking a shower. Mm -hmm. But I think it's the, the mental state at what, at, as of why you're taking that shower. Mm. It's easy to just jump in the shower. Like I'm dirty. I'm just going to scrub off real quick and I'm clean. Like, okay, cool. Right. Didn't even like, didn't even think about taking the shower. Right. But like if you are, you know, if you have purpose and intent with why you are, you know, doing something, and this is just a, one example of mm -hmm. going to take a shower to, you know, make that transition from work to home or make that mm -hmm. transition from, you know, taking care of the kids all day and becoming intimate is, you know, I'm taking the shower because X, Y, Z, or mm -hmm. I'm doing this because X, Y, Z. Um, yeah. And I think that will change a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Cause I know that I do that sometimes mm -hmm. like I'm take shower and I'm taking the shower cause I'm about to get freaky. <laughs> <laughs> do you really? Yeah, I, you do it sometimes. <laughs> don't even give me that. You'll go, you'll go sneak in the shower and then be coming out wearing something, you know, <laughs> some fancy little thing. I'm like, Oh, okay. I see what's going on here. <laughs>
<laughs> I'm about to get freaky. <laughs> Remember in Parenthood when he's all, we're going to Funky Town. Yeah. Oh my God, I fucking love when you so much. You said nightshirt too, and that reminded me of Night- <laughs> 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 Do you guys watch New Girl? Do you remember when Nick was like, he put that shirt thing on and Jess goes, you wearing a nightgown? And he goes, it's my long, it's, it's my. Like this massive, like kind of dingy t-shirt. It's like goes my down long, his knees. long, or my night, is that a night shirt or a long shirt? I think Something like that. Yeah, it's, it's like, it's, if, if, it's comfy and it's breathable. Yeah. Oh my God, it's so funny. Okay. <laughs> warm, warm, on the, warm on the top, breathes on the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Stacy. we hope that that helps. Um, but there definitely has to be something for that mental switch. Like there's, and sometimes it's like, I got, I need time. It's, it's foreplay without touching really. It's like doing things to get you into goddess receiving surrender, you know, woman mode outside of being a mom. Right. And don't forget you guys. It's so fun. I'm going to have my friend on the podcast to talk about this being postpartum and everything. And she's going to talk about that. Like being a woman and being a wife comes even before being a mom. It's the solid foundation. You're a woman you are a wife, you are a mom, you are a business owner, right? Or whatever your jam is. There has to be like a solid foundation. You are a woman first above all else. Do not forget that you are a woman. Your pussy, your breasts, your um, just your presence is for more than just feeding and growing humans. It's, it's so much more than that. Although that's a beautiful thing you can do, yes. But I hope that you hear my heart in that. I really do. All right. Sky says, OMG, I have another question now. Olivia and Joe, LOL. <laughs> Got that right this time. I know kids is something you guys do not want. So what is your go-to um, contraception? I don't want to turn into to turn to birth control. I just feel personally that's too much harm and chemicals to put in my body. Becca says, I got off birth control a year ago. It's definitely doable. Yes. Yeah, we've been on birth control for what? Two years? Yeah. We've been off. I've been off the pill for two or three years now. Getting freaky with the Celines, yeah. Becca said. We're thinking of podcast name for those just jumping on. Um, hi, Adam, Emily, Kiki. Hello, hello. Everyone loves Joe. They literally say hashtag Joe Olivia. Like literally, I've Kiki heard, was she, like, "Oh, she coined that, didn't she?" She did. Yeah. Fave couple. I love this so much. <laughs> um, Becca says she got off birth control. Best decision she ever made. My libido was completely revived after I got off. Yay. I'm gonna say something really powerful and potent and opinionated, and you can hate me all you want. I don't think anyone, unless it's for some crazy medical reason I'm not, I've never heard of, um, should, no one needs to be on the pill. In fact, I don't think it's healthy for what anyone. Mean, no, hang on, pause. No medical condition you've ever heard of? Isn't that the whole reason that you started birth control when you were a kid because of your thrush? Yeah. So when I started birth control, <laughs> it's because I got thrush in my mouth a lot. And then I got on the pill. But basically, the doctors gave up. The only reason yeah. that they did that is because I got thrush every time I got my period. So you know what That's they just- said? They literally said this let's just take your period away. And I didn't have a period for 10 years. That's just a technicality. I wanted to pick on you. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Moment of silence for the bitching that's going to happen after this. I'm just kidding. I love you. Okay. So what happened was, I don't think anyone needs to be on the pill. I think that there so much, so many other options um, than like hormonal birth, birth control that is fucking up your hormones. Okay. Um, Personally, we use like natural fertility awareness method sometimes. <laughs> We're not perfect, okay? We're not. I'm not going to lie. Um, we Anytime I'm nervous that I'm ovulating, give your body a year, two, three years, however long it takes to kind of get back into your normal groove. Um, be mindful of that. Your period doesn't just go back to normal the second you get off the pill. If I was on for over 10 years, it took me like a year, year and a half, two years um, to get like regular again to where I know when my body is ovulating. Like I literally know all of the signs for it ovulating. And you can get a book. It's called like natural, nat- natural fertility awareness method. It's like a big old textbook and you can learn all about your mucus and all these things. So you can know when you're ovulating. Love this conversation for you. Sorry. Great. Okay. So when I know, like I know off the top of my head when I'm ovulating and anytime I'm even nervous, if I'm even getting close to my ovulation window, we will use a condom. We will just, or we'll abstain, but that's rare because he's not home very often. So we'll just use a condom or we like (laughs) pull and pray, (laughs) which I don't recommend is not smart. We do this knowing that, well, if something comes of this, apparently it was meant to be but we are not here for that. God, you hear me? Okay. 
So we, um, you can track your temperature. Like I have a thermometer. I don't, um, if I'm being honest, but that's like the best way to do it. Um, especially if you are just getting off the pill and you want to like get back into knowing your body. I think that's a beautiful way to do it. Um, otherwise we'll use condoms if we're nervous or, um, he's gone a lot. So I also have a very different lifestyle. If you're with your partner all of the time, I definitely recommend like getting the thermometer, knowing your body. I know many people that have been doing this for years and it has always worked. Um, I've even gotten like the ovulation tests before, like they look like pregnancy tests, um, the ovulation tests from like the drugstore. And I'll take that. I think it's like 72 hours before you take that. And then if it says like a smiley face, that means you're ovulating. And then, um, if you're trying to get pregnant, go have sex. But if you're not, then don't have sex. So that's kind of what we do. Um, but no, I will never get on the pill again. And if I ever, ever was to have children, um, my daughter would never know the pill ever. I just don't think it's necessary. Um, if you get really bad cramps or really heavy flow, birth control can be really helpful. Yeah, but there's also, I think, other ways. Personally, Stacey, if that works for someone, um, you know, for anyone, totally respect your decision. I just personally think like when we ignore our pain, we actually, when we turn off our pain, we turn off our ability to receive pleasure and experience pleasure, pain and pleasure polarity, light and dark, good and bad, um, you know, sun and moon, yin and yang, right? Pain and pleasure. They're, they're just polar sides. Um, and pain is a part of life sometimes. And so if I have really bad cramps, like if I have to be active, um, I try to ignore them the best I can, like use peppermint oil or like natural remedies. You can use lemon essential oil before you get your period. Um, heating pad works great. Sometimes I will turn to like a chemical like Midol if I'm really needing it or Tylenol. Um, but I try to embrace the pain and let it teach me and let it remind me that I am a woman and I am releasing and it is a beautiful time. And I need to get rid of the things that are in my body that no longer serve me. And it's like doing my body a favor. Pull out. Yeah, pull out. Pull and pray. That's what, um, oh no, uh, Jax from Vanderpump Rules called it spray and pray. There's a, don't do that. Don't do that. OMG, yes. Okay, let's see. What did Autumn say? Favorite couple. Oh, is that what you were saying? That's, that's amazing. Alyssa, just saying as a mom, you have to take some time for you and your marriage. Believe me, I got boob leech toddler and work as a nurse 32 hours a week. 100%. Alyssa, that's beautiful. Thank you for sharing. And that's exactly it. Like, I remember my parents taught me that from a very, very, very young age um, that mom and dad came first. And it pissed me off as a kid. I was so irritated half the time because they always teamed up against us. Always. It was always like, well, if your mother said no, then I say no. Or like, well, you know, come into the room. And like, I would have to talk to both of them. And it was two against one. And it was not fair. But I'm very grateful for that because growing up and like now in my marriage, if we were to ever have kids or you know, we have, I have a business and he works full time, you know, at the military and we've got three animals. Like we come first, we have to keep our babies alive. That's important. Make sure they're alive, but we have to have each other first and foremost at the end of the day. Like it has to be the foundation of which everything else is built. Absolutely. Does that Teammates. help? Woo! Teammates for life. Yay. And it's something too, like we will say like same team. Same team, like yeah. look at each other, same team. Like when we feel like you're getting resistance, when you feel like your partner's against you literally or you feel that tension from them, like they think you're against them, it's like same team, same team. We're literally on the same team. Like why are we, why is this happening? Like we're same team. It's okay. Like this isn't bad, you know? Becca, yes, Olivia, that's what happened to me because I became numb to pleasure slowly over time. Exactly. When we avoid the pain, we're also turning off our ability to receive pleasure. That's why it's so important if there has ever, ever been any kind of trauma, which birth is actually a trauma. Um, you know, you, you develop a lot in your womb and your pain and your pleasure and everything slowly gets turned off. And so ignoring it and choosing to avoid it versus working through it with someone who is trained like EMDR therapists, um, there's like trauma therapy specialists, there's um, energy healers that work with trauma, you know, any kind of like PTSD trauma work, anything that you've experienced in your life, you have to face it, right? And you have to, but do it with support of someone who's certified, not a coach. Coaches do not heal trauma. We do not have the ability to do that as much as we would love to. Um, this is something that like I've worked with clients on sex and sexuality and they're seeing a therapist at the same time. That works with the past, the trauma. I work with the here and now and the moving forward, right? Danielle, ah, so happy to cut you live. Yay. Um, but when we turn off our ability to experience pain, we turn off our ability to experience pleasure and all that it's capable of, really. Any final questions? We'll take one more for the road. Do you have anything to say? 
I kind of took over. I'm sorry. Do you guys have questions for Joe? Do you guys have questions about embody sex, marriage, conversations? Do we talk about conversations? Yeah. Did we? A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. Kind of through their questions. It was kind of divine timing. Yeah. Do you have anything else to say on that? Don't mm, avoid it. Don't avoid what? Oh, no, not you. Sorry. Like, oh. don't avoid the conversation. I'm not trying to avoid it. Jeez Louise. <laughs> don't avoid the conversation. <laughs> um, yeah, don't avoid the conversation. I think uh, be intentional with everything that you're doing. What you get that? so far away from the mic. Oh, jeez. Yeah, closer. Yeah. Okay. Closer, um, babe. Intimacy. Just kidding. Yeah, I think you need to be, you know, have the conversations. Start small. Mm -hmm. Um Remember, don't uh, don't use the D word. It's not an option. You guys are teammates. Um, no matter what, whether you're you know if you're in a serious relationship, not maybe not yet married, or if you are married or whatever, um, or if you don't want to get married, you're still you know in some sort of packed relationship. Whatever you know, you guys are on the same side. You guys are obviously together for some sort of reason, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, just try to. Try to get to that place where there's a mutual agreement that divorce is not not a thing, not a real thing. Working on yourself takes time. I think we talked about that a little bit. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of time. And I'll say this. Yeah. Okay. Do you have something else? No. Go. But I'm gonna have you answer Danielle's question okay. after this. Okay. Um, the other thing I would say is this: <clears throat> both of us are committed to growth, both personally and together. And I think that that has been a key piece for us over the last 11 years as well. Is that if I want to try something, for example, or I'm learning something or I'm growing in an area, he doesn't just like kick his feet up and like, oh, that's cool for you. He's doing his own work to grow, right? He's doing his own things to advance his life and oh his God, happiness so I gotta, I gotta keep up. and his passion. Yeah. He's like, damn, I got to keep up, right? Like sometimes there's this fear that our partner will outgrow us. They'll only outgrow you if you stop growing. Truth bomb, right? Sorry. So... We're both focused, like I hear so often, like, well, my partner's not open to, the, you know, having the conversation or my partner, like, just doesn't hear me when I talk or, you know, X, Y, Z. Um, I say that a lot. That's really annoying. Um, <laughs> but it's, and have your partner watch this right now. Listen, listen up, partners. Listen up, people. You both have to be committed to it. It's not just up to the one other person to hold and carry your relationship. You have to both be working on it. You both have to be committed to it, right? You both have to be focused on like what's the best possible, you know, relationship that we can have and what is that going to require of us? What does that look like for us? What is the vision of that? What is that going to mean that I need to show up as? Like I'm constantly like how can I be the best for me? But then that even means I'm the best for Joe and he's doing the same exact thing. So we're focused on our own growth personally and our growth together. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And we hear each other. Guess what? When Joe says stuff I don't like, guess what? His feelings are valid. He's allowed to have those feelings. When I have to say things that he doesn't like, it's not necessarily like, oh, I agree or like whatever, never letting, letting someone talk down to you, but it's like their feelings are valid when they're sharing them. You might not agree or you might not feel the same way, but you never, ever, ever diminish their feelings. Because you don't agree. It's like, I okay. You know, uh, that. What? And it, it brings it back to when we, I think I first saw it in Parenthood of all things. Oh. When Zeke and Camille, towards the end of the the, the series. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Where he starts going, I see you and I hear you. That is, I mean, I always think of that. Totally. So I try to do that all the time. I think that's huge. Yeah, I see you and I hear you. Like, it doesn't mean, oh, I agree with you and yeah, you're right. Yeah. But it means I see you and I hear you. Your feelings are valid here. Empathy. Empathy. You don't have to agree with it. You just have to, you know, do your best to understand it. Yeah. I understand where you're coming from. I don't agree with those feelings or I don't share those feelings with you, but I understand them. I see them. I hear them. Yeah. Now I, we can, you know, figure out some sort of compromise to move forward. And have it come up with a solution together, right? Sometimes Joe says stuff and he's like, I don't know what this means, but here's what's going on. Or I'll be like, something feels off. And he's like, well, okay, well, here's what's happening. But like, it just let it be. It is what it is. Like, it's going to be fine, right? He might be going through something personally. Oh my God, everyone loves that show. Yay. Oh my Great God, show. we love Parenthood. Okay. We love Parenthood. Um, 
Yeah, I would definitely say that though. Like we we're committed to coming up with solutions together. We don't go to bed angry. No one storms out. You know, we might need a couple of minutes or a couple hours to like breathe into it. Like, you know, I'll ask Joe some tough questions sometimes and he's like, can I get back to you? Like, that's really intense. Wow. That came out of nowhere. That was heavy. Um, and it's like, let him marinate with it. Men think and feel very differently than we do. So it's letting him like figure it out. You're very good at this, um, of like biting your tongue. Sometimes too good to the point where you won't say what you're thinking or feeling. <laughs> which is what we're working on it. Right. But it's like this, um, but I'm also trying not to be an asshole. Right. <laughs> so. so he'll bite his tongue. He's very filtered, but then I notice that and I create the safety for him to open up and say the thing that he's biting his tongue on knowing that it's important. But that's the other thing. We love each other. You lovingly say things. We don't rip each other apart. We don't jump down each other's throats. We don't, you know, um, tear each other down at all ever. That is not okay, right? That is verbal abuse. You don't do that. And um, I also make sure with even the personal growth work I do and with the coaching, I have to be very careful and I'm not perfect, but to not become the coach in the conversation for my fellow entrepreneurs and coaches, don't be his coach, don't be his mom, be his wife, be his partner, his teammate. You're not above him talking down to him. And that's very difficult for moms sometimes where it's like he becomes just another one of the kids. He's your partner. He's not one of your children. He's not your client. He's your partner. Okay. Go back and answer Danielle's questions. How to communicate when you're apart, when there's a disagreement, you can't see them face to face. So I'm trying to think. I mean, it kind of depends, like, if if maybe it's just something that's, you know, in the middle of the day, um, you know, I'm at work, she's here at working, um, you know, maybe it just kind of goes unresolved until we do see each other face-to-face. -face. Um, in more extreme of our situations where, you know, if I'm overseas or I'm out in the field, um, you know, you know, have been gone for, you know, not home for a week or two, um, I think we do do our best to, you know, work through it. I think that if there is something that is major that comes up, I feel like we've always done our best to at least get on the phone mm -hmm. um, so we can at least have that vocal communication. Cause yeah, not know, in text. I mean, you know, everybody in this day and age, you know, the primary communication is texting. Um, mm -hmm. That's how, that's almost how you start, especially if it's something little. And I'm pretty sure everybody can relate that, more often than not, some text messages turn into a gasoline fire mm -hmm. and nobody knows how we got there, what's happening. Mm -hmm. uh, so if there's any sort of like, if it's agreed upon, you know, by both people, like, okay, clearly something's going on here, do your best to get on the phone. Obviously, you, you might not be able to get on the phone right away, uh, but if it's like, hey, you know, I'm doing X, Y, Z right now, let me call you in a couple hours, you know, hey, I'm sorry, I can't call you until tomorrow morning. Let's call, let, let me get on the phone with you and let's mm -hmm. figure this out. Let's actually physically, you know, one-on-one -on -one talk about it rather than trying to, you know, get on. Because that's the best you can do. If you can't see each other face to face, you know, sure you can get on, you know, FaceTime, whatever. But ultimately you can only talk on the phone and you have to understand that and recognize that and, you know, use that. You know, that's the only way you can do it. Well, and I think the other thing too, to piggyback off of that is exactly what we said, where we've already created the safety and that divorce is not an option. I know it's a little different when you're dating and you're not married yet, but like, it's almost like when, when I know like divorce is not an option, he's not going to leave me. And even if we're disagreeing, we're still like, listen, I know we can't talk about it right now, but I love you. We're going to figure this out. It's going to be okay. Like I need Joe to tell me those words all of the time. It's going to be okay. Um, then I can breathe a little bit easier knowing that, yeah, things are off for a second. Things don't feel very good. It's rare that this happens because we do have such open communication that I think a lot of times too, especially like in the beginning, this can happen because you're getting to know each other. Um, but disagreements can also be from like resentment, like buried where you hold on and you harbor stuff for so long that eventually it just explodes. And that's where these bickerings and these arguments happen or someone does something to piss you off and you need to have the conversation, but definitely try to get on the phone. I love that. Do not text about it. Just, just save yourself, right? Just, we've all been there in a <laughs> shitty conversation where it shouldn't have been in text. Um, but then definitely like knowing that Danielle says we're basically married. We're all in totally. So then it's just knowing like, okay, we're in a disagreement. 
this sucks. Okay. But you go do your thing. I'm going to go do my thing. I love you. I can't wait to talk to you tomorrow morning on the phone and we'll figure it out together then. And then it just like, isn't this weird? Like, Oh my God, is he going to leave? Is he pissed? Oh my God. Da, da, da. Like creating all these stories. It's like, we're good. Like, I love you. We obviously need to get to the bottom of this, but we'll talk about it tomorrow. And I love you. Right. And it's like, I love you. I love you. I can't say it enough. <laughs> Shannon says, sending all the love for you, too. I can't wait to watch the replay. Hashtag nine to five jobs suck. Hashtag mm. third shift problems. I'm sorry. Been there. Oh. It does suck. Definitely sucks. Becca says, I'm definitely someone who processes internally and Seth processes externally. So we have to figure out how to, ha how to have those conversations. It's not easy. He processes internally. I process externally. So a lot of times I'm like – no, just tell me. Like, mm -hmm. let's fix it. You can't walk away for a second. Get back here. Bah! I mean, this is rare. I don't know the let, last time we've had me, a yelling conversation. Yeah. Let me get my shit together, and then I'll, then I'll let you know what's going on. It's <laughs> – and Becca, maybe have Seth watch this. Hi, Seth, if you're watching. Um, but we have had to respect each other for that. He needs to know, and he knows that, um, that I'm outward, and I have to respect that he's an inward, and we're going to process things differently – and that's okay. They're both okay. Neither one is right or wrong or good or bad or better than the other. Of course, I would like to figure things out in that exact second, but that's not always real life, you know? So it's just both of us. It's, it's knowing that. It's like sitting down and having the conversation like, listen, okay, here we are. You know, like let's have a conversation about our relationship. Like here's the things that are going really well. Here's the things I'm really excited to improve. What are you excited to improve? What do you think is going really well? Having this dialogue, loving each other through it, deciding that divorce is not an option, right? And then it's like saying these things like, okay, so what we've learned over our last, you know, couple years of marriage is that I process internally and you process externally. So can we agree to disagree <laughs> that like we're very different humans and it's okay. And knowing that moving forward in difficult conversations and difficult arguments, I'm going to need a second to think about it and feel into it. And you're going to be able to say it in the moment, but we're going to like take a minute, breathe, and then come back and have the conversation. It's like getting just on the same page, speaking out the things instead of keeping them inside. It's like speaking out the things that we're both thinking, but like coming to an agreement on it out loud. Yeah. Okay. I hope that was helpful. Yes, we definitely have to navigate that. But once we realized we processed differently, we were able to handle it better. Totally. It's just learning each other. Yeah. You're two different humans. Mm -hmm. We hope that this was helpful. Was this helpful? Did you guys like this? Should we do this more? Well, good, because we're starting a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and um, if you guys have specific questions that you want us to answer, certain topics you want us to tackle, um, please let us know. It's going to be more fun when it's a very interactive thing. Eventually, I would like to make it where we can do like a call-in show. Yeah, or even just like live podcast, you know, just do oh, it. Oh, like this. Yeah, it's just, just recorded. But I want to get them on the phone where we're like, oh, hey, Becca calling in from Iowa. What's yeah, going on today? Absolutely. And she's like, listen, I process internally and he processes <laughs> externally. How do we navigate it? And we're like, that's a great question, Becca. I know everyone listening right now could definitely say something about this. Okay, yay. Yes, a podcast. It's going to be awesome. Becca, I was not making fun of you, by the way, because we are very much the same way. It's just reversed. I love you. Uh, Sky says, thank you guys. Loved it here for a yay. Okay, you guys, guess freaking what? Embody the program. Body image, body positivity, self-love, showing up fully in the bedroom, being able to be naked and love the fuck out of yourself. We start on Monday. <laughs> I was reading the stuff. Oh. We start on Monday, okay? Woo! And maybe if um, I give enough blowjobs, Joe will come into the group and talk. Will uh, you share stuff in there? I mean, sure. I like come live with me maybe once? We'll figure it out. Okay. So embody. If you struggle with being fully seen online, in the bedroom, owning what you want, using your voice, right? Loving who you are. If you're nervous about getting bikini ready, guess what? Put the bikini on. Go, you ready? You ready for the bikini season? Your man is not thinking about your cellulite. I promise you that. Let yourself be free. Let yourself say, say it. I was going to say if he is, he's a fucking douchebag. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. Get you're, ready for some radical you're, honesty you're, on this you're, podcast. You're a dickhead. Go away. I don't know. My husband, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Live is hard because it's totally unfiltered, but that's what the podcast will be like too. So this is my husband. Get to know him. He is very much 
unfiltered. But anyway, we start the Embody program on Monday. I want you guys to have better sex. I want you to be able to feel amazing naked. I want you to be able to go to the beach this summer. I want you to be able to fully be seen online and sharing your thoughts, sharing your voice, right? I want you to be able to love yourself. Yes, it's okay to want to lose weight. It's okay to want to be healthier. It's okay to want to, you know, work out and do these things. But if it's coming from a place of self-hatred or self-deprivation, it is not sustainable. We've all been the yo-yo dieters. I've been there. I feel you. Sweet baby Jesus, you deserve to be you and love yourself exactly where you're at. And, you know, when I was able to own my body, I'm showing up in sex very differently. Yes. 100%. 100%. And it took things to the next level for us. He loves me no matter what. I have to, in turn, love myself no matter what. If he's worshiping me, I'm worshiping me. Things are like a next level experience. So we start on Monday. Embody is what it's called. It's a six-week program. It starts April 1st. $333 for the six weeks. The lowest cost program I've done in a very, very, very long time. Um, and it's the first time I run it. So it's going to be a super fun, intimate, exclusive opportunity for those who decide to join us. So message me. Let me know. I have payment plans available as well. Um, spread out over the six weeks. We can make this work for damn near anyone who is feeling called to this work. Um, and just tell your husband, like, listen, I I want to love myself again. Um, I want to be able to show up fully for you. What would it take for if I wanted to take a program to work on my body back when I hated myself? What would you have wanted me to say to get your support? Oh man, I think if you would have just come to me and been like, "Hey, you know, this is what's been going on," you know, whether it's recognized by whether it was recognized by me at that time or not, but like. But you could tell something was off. Yeah. Like, hey, you know, I know this. We've been going through this. It's on me. You know, I don't feel great about myself, you know, whatever it may be. Um, But there's this thing that I want to do to get my shit Mm -hmm. together. You know, (laughs) what do you think about that? I love you. Yeah. I mean, I think just straightforward, straightforward, super blunt. Yeah. Um, I want to have better sex. Yeah. Yeah. And it's on me. And here's what I've got to do. You want better sex? All right. Here, I'm going to do this thing. Yeah. Yeah, a hundred percent. So <laughs> let's get you back in touch with being the fl- p- pleasure, pleasure forward woman that you are. Um, we're going to have so much good. H- Honest Joe strikes again. So here for it. Kiana says, I'm so here for this podcast to hell freaking. Yes. Podcast radio needs to be a thing. I totally agree. Hashtag husband of the year. Oh my God, he is husband of the year. I love you. Okay. I did promise him a blowjob for this. Um, let's see. You guys are the best. Can't wait for the podcast name release. Yeah, we have no idea. Love you guys. This was a great live. Look forward to more. Danielle, I have got so much feedback from sharing my testimonial. So your work is transformational. I love you. Oh my God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We love you guys. We're here for you. We're supporting you. Let us know if you have ideas for our podcast name. Let us know what conversations you want us to have regards to sex, intimacy, relationships, um, life together as being in a long-term relationship. And Maybe it's just the divorce is not an option. Maybe that's the secret. Who knows? No, like, I mean, the podcast. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Think about it. We'll think about yeah. it. We're going to let you guys mm-hmm. know. Okay? We love you. Greta, yay. I'm so happy you were here. We love you guys. Um, we'll see you guys on another Facebook Live. Well, Joe leaves in a couple weeks. We'll try to get him on a couple more before he goes. Podcast name, Better Sex with the Celines. <laughs> Hell yes. Honest shit about much. sex. That's your podcast name. We love you guys. Keep them coming. We love you. We see you. We appreciate you. And we're always here for you. Thanks you know for coming out. Bye, guys. We love you.